One more thing I forgot to mention, I'm going to do the... Just real quick, one more thing I forgot to mention, I went ahead and redid the white um, on some certain parts. The center post here uh, has these white indicator lines right here, which indicate the center brace, which I'm not going to add in this car uh, because I'm going to have the load there, but it would basically go at the top. So if, say if you were modeling this car uh, empty, what you would want to do is have these two braces, but then also have the center post or the center brace, which is on top. You could do that with uh, some styrene stock. Uh, anyway, I painted the white markers on both sides, and on the ends, I removed all the masking tape, and you can see we got a nice, clean uh, surface to work with here, ready for decals. I did touch up the white paint on the ends a little bit here on the ladder. Some of the uh, paint peeled off as I took the masking off, which is alright. And then the corner gussets here are also painted white, so I went ahead and painted those as well. But the top as well, this top cord is painted white. So all that I just did real quickly with uh, one or two coats of white acrylic. But the car is ready for the washes now, so we'll go ahead and get started on that now. So it's time for the first stage of the weathering effects with everything pretty much ready to go. Uh, you also notice I got the trucks reinstalled. Uh, I got those painted while I did the car body as well. I forgot to mention that. I went ahead and reinstalled those. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the washes now. And with washes, it's just like any other project I've done before. The hard part here is that we got these outer external braces, which are all down the side of the car. So we've got to be a little bit more careful with those and trying to get it all the nooks and crannies around these ribs. So I'm going to try to do my best work around this. The best tool to use for this is a good stiff bristle brush like this. Um, this brush here is specifically for washes. I don't use it for anything else. I use it for washes uh, because it's very, very flat and thin and it works great for this. So I'm going to be using my Anita's white acrylic. This is great. I'm not going to be diluting this down with alcohol. I'm going to be diluting it down with water. I always use water for this, but you can use alcohol if you wish. It's totally your call there. But just like always, I'm going to take a little bit of the paint to start with. Not too much. Load up the bristles, take it to my mixing bowl. I'm going to mix it in just a little bit of water. And if I take this bowl up here, you can kind of see what we're working with here. You see that how light that wash is? It's perfect. Kind of load my bristles up like that, and then I'll transfer it to the car. Now this is not going to be perfect. This is just going to be kind of sloppy, but we're going to spread this around here in a minute. And as we work down the side of the car, we can kind of spread it around a little bit more. In the areas where you got heavier buildups of paint, you can pick up some of that paint and move it around. This is kind of a fine balance of working fast but not working too fast. You don't want this paint to dry too quickly because it does become harder to move around. So you kind of got to work quickly, but you don't want to work too quickly that you start screwing stuff up. Basically, once you've uh, spread the paint around, then you go back and progressively load your bristles up with some more water, and you just kind of start uh, fanning this paint out like this. And this is just going to be the, the stage of moving all the paint around into all the cracks and crevices along the side of the car. And also, we're just evening out the brush strokes. We're keeping it still a little bit rough. I still want these to be very noticeable streaks. So, as you're doing this, scrub the paint into all these corners. But well, after you've done that, with each panel, go back and streak it down. This is the important step right here. This is the part that's very important. So as you do that, make sure to streak them back down like this. And this is for each rib on both sides and ends of the car. I will not be showing both sides. I'm just going to show the one just so you guys get the basic idea. These washes are very simple but very effective. If you get a little too much water or paint on your brush, just wash it off, take it over to a towel, and start over. And you can see we're already back to square one. And we can keep working. Just smoothing that paint out and keeping our brush strokes. If we move down the side of the car, it's the same technique. You just load the paint up on the side of the car. Pick some of this up. Make sure to get it behind all those railings, too. Every one of these little areas needs to be completely covered. So make sure to get in all these angles first before you smooth it out. Once I've done that, I take my partially clean brush and run it back and put the fine streaks 
back in each one of these panels. Kind of notice my hand motion here. It's just feathering across the side of the car right now. Barely any kind of pressure whatsoever. Now here's where the magic happens, and this is how you do some of these more complex fades and uh, if you want to do them by hand. Use a fan brush like this. Just softly go in and blend. You see this? Blend it. Just like that. And that's a great little technique for doing hand fading work on the sides of your cars. Make sure to hit it at as many angles as you can because you want this all to blend out really smoothly. Don't overwork it though. That's plenty right there. So don't overwork it. Something like that is perfect for what we need and you can see we've achieved that very blotchy, grimy fade that we wanted on this model. So it's time to get to work on the patch effects and the car I'm going to be modeling I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, that first prototype photo was kind of to give you an idea of the car uh, and these kind of styles of cars and how they get the patching but the particular car I'm going to model is this one here which I have taken a picture of during the Fosforia Rail Fest. It is car number 4454R1 and you can see all of the beat sides, the top cords beat to shit, you got holes in the sides we got all the fresh patching on the bottom and kind of on the corner of the car here. It's kind of hard to see though because this is an iPhone photo. So, But you got some really neat little tags there as well. Uh, so it's a neat car uh, and I want to try to model it here. So what do we need to do is the patching. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You could mask the sides with tape and go in these ribs and everything like that. But that's extremely tedious. Uh, it's easier to do on a smooth sided car. The other thing with that, the patches will look too perfect. I don't want these to look like perfect patches because the ones on the real cars are not perfect. So, I want to do a stencil. And what I've come up with is the method of cutting a piece of construction paper or masking like copy paper, uh, any kind of graph paper, something like that, and then just cutting the masking for the patching out. That way, I can just take it over the car like this and spray it on. Pretty clever, huh? This is actually a stencil I used on a previous car, but I'm going to be reusing it for the opposite side of this car since I don't have prototype photos of the opposite side. But I'm going to make the patches for the prototype side that I have pictures of, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you here too. So you'll need to start with a fresh sheet of paper. Again, it doesn't matter what kind of paper you use. I do like to use a thinner paper, so don't, you know, construction paper will work. I did try that, however, that is a little thicker. So a thinner paper like this, like graph paper or something like that will work. Okay, so I've put the car on the paper and I've kind of lined it up at the base of the uh, paper here. And I'm going to go ahead and move it back a little bit. Uh, this graph paper is nice because it has these little lines printed on the paper. So you can kind of, it kind of helps you position these patches out a little bit. I'm going to use my prototype for, uh, reference here in the corner to kind of get started. And I'm just going to line this up and try to match the patching that I see on the car. And I'm going to take a sharp X-Acto blade and then just rough cut all of this out. Not being perfect at all. Again, I want these patches to look imperfect, just like the prototype. So I'm not trying to have them perfect here. But I'm just going to start kind of cutting this out here. Very roughly, actually. There's the first little bit. Again, referring to my photo. What I need to do now, you can see where that patch is going to go. It's going to be right in that corner. Now I need to do the large patch here. So I'm going to position that again. A little bit down here. I'm just going to start cutting that little patch out right here. <clears throat> kind of goes a little past the top here. Cut that straight down. I'll move the camera here in a second so you can get a better view of this. We'll just cut that little patch out. This is the main reporting mark patch here, this big square. I accidentally tore that, but that's okay. We can repair that with a little tape in a second. And then I'm going to do the patch for the F-plate stencil, which is on this side here, which is another uh, relatively large square masked off on the side. I'm trying to keep this as centered as possible. There we go. And I'll keep working. This last little patch right here is going to be for the new data. And again, just like before, I'm lining this up on the side of the car. 
it's right here just in this small little square there we go and that's pretty much it so now you can see this is pretty much cut out to fit over this car and if I actually take the car you can see how everything's gonna pretty much line up here alright so I got the car on a box here in my basement and I've taken the paper mask and lined it up just over the top of the car and this is the crucial here you want to make sure all this is lined up exactly where you want it on both ends it's got to be perfectly aligned so once you've done that I like to use a uh, high gloss Krylon Supermax black this is great for doing black patches and of course wear a glove when you're doing this because you're going to have to keep a hand on this patch but I just take the paint give her a couple good test pairs I'm getting pretty low here but this should be uh, this should be just enough again just double check all your positioning here get it right get it right very important there you go and then just go over the side like this quick sprays very quick sprays here just like that let this dry for a little bit and then come back and add another coat this opposite side is the exact same process you just line up your uh, masking template and I'm just gonna take my paint and try to get it positioned just right just like that and now I can take it and carefully go in and Oops, sorry about that go ahead and start spraying this I'm not going too heavy with these coats they're pretty light just enough to cover the area real real fast just like that 